Hey folks, let's talk about the pet peeve of many fragrance lovers out there. I know you probably heard about it if you're a real frag head. We're talking about reformulations and uh, specifically reformulations just don't live up to the original. They're not as good. They're not as long lasting. What's up? What's the deal? I know it's the worst, right? So, but before we get started, drop in the comments down below right here. What are you wearing today? What's your scent of the day? I would love to know. Let's have the conversation down there and let me know if it's the original or a reformulation, if it's better or worse. All right. So anyway, moving on. What's the deal? Why do companies keep messing up uh, with the good thing that somebody formulated at one point? Well, it turns out that there are a few key reasons behind this frustrating phenomenon. And no, you're not crazy for thinking about it. Okay. First off, regulations. Regulations in the fragrance industry have gotten a lot stricter over the years thanks to the International Fragrance Association or IFRA for short, okay? They've placed restrictions on a bunch of ingredients usually due to potential allergies or um, sen uh, um, sensitization issues, okay? So people... Um, they, they, there are reports that people get sensitive to certain ingredients that weren't out there before and they have to change it. I noticed this uh, from myself since I was in the industry actively participating as a, um, you know, uh, as a fragrance brand with my brother. There was one scent that we were actually looking into that was formulated from in Germany. That was an absolute banger, okay? That thing was, uh, I'm just going to say it was an Aventos killer back in the day and it was awesome. It was really cool. However, a couple years later, we wanted to kind of uh, go back and maybe see if we could reuse it and release it, but it wasn't allowed anymore. So that train has left the station. So that's that's really crazy. Um, but other examples um, could be oak musk, for example. Okay, so this stuff used to be uh, a cornerstone in a lot of classic chiffre and fougere fragrances, um, adding a uh, a rich, earthy, slightly animalic vibe, okay? But in 2010, IFRA uh, majorly, majorly limited the use of oak moss and its sister ingredient, tree moss, because of uh, possible allergens, okay? So perfumers had to drastically reduce the amount they could include in a fragrance, if not cut it out entirely, okay? And that really impacted some beloved scents, okay? <laughs> Another big one is, I don't know if you heard of this one, it's, uh, I'm going to spare you the chemical uh, description, but it's called Illy, uh, Illy, Lilial, okay, Lilial, also known as, uh, I'm going to just put it down below in the description, okay, because that's like a huge name, I don't even know how to pronounce it, but it's, it's a super common synthetic compound used for soft powdery floral scents, so you can imagine a lot of fragrances out there. But in recent years, it's been found to potentially impact fertility. Okay, so IFRA had uh, pretty much banned it starting in 2022. A ton of popular designer fragrances are going to have to be tweaked because of this thing alone. Okay, but let's be real. A big motivator is also money. Okay, using cheaper synthetic ingredients instead of the pricier natural originals. Okay, or just straight up watering down the juice does help keep the cost down, especially on a large scale, um, and therefore profits up for these big perfume houses. I know, it stinks, pun intended. <laughs> but at least it doesn't stink as much as it used to, right? If we're following that logic. Now, let's talk about a specific example of fragrance that's been hit hard by reformulation over the years. One of that comes to mind, especially to me, when I was growing up, okay, Le Mal by Jean-Paul Gaultier. Uh, when this bad boy first came out in 1995, I was, uh, well, I was 10 years old, so I wasn't using it that much, but I was using it probably five years later. Um, it was a total game changer with its bold lavender, mint, and vanilla combo. But fast forward a few decades, and many fragrance uh, enthusiasts say it's been neutered compared to its uh, former glory okay the scent is thinner weaker and just doesn't last like it used to likely due to cheaper ingredients and watered down concentrations okay so unfortunately a lot of the most egregious reformulations seem to happen when the fragrance is super hyped 
so it's hyped up and popular at first, okay? They'll, um, they, they'll release it uh, in all its robust, high-quality glory to get those positive reviews, brand loyalty, and so on. But then slowly but surely, they start diluting it down using cheaper ingredients, basically doing a bait-and-switch while still charging the same price. Not cool, right? <laughs> uh, one theory I have as well is, you know, there's all of these um, flankers these days where basically um, you kind of almost need to lower the expectations of the current thing, meaning the original, so that the new thing, the new flanker that comes out actually has something to say and and has some validity to it, if you know what I mean. So you make the old thing weaker and then the new thing pops up and all of a sudden it's the greatest. It's kind of like, you remember Battery Gate with the iPhones where um, Apple would slowly kind of decrease the longevity of your battery through software of your old iPhone so that when the new iPhone comes out, you basically are back to zero, uh, which is at this point zero is great because the battery lasts all day again. So I, I feel like that's somewhat that the fragrance industry has been doing for a long time and it just kind of makes sense from a business perspective. It's not ethical necessarily, but you know, it is what it is. However, not all reformulations are automatically a downgrade, okay? Sure, many of them, especially with designer fragrances, end up being shadows of their former glory, as I just described with uh, Jean-Paul Gaultier. But in some cases, tweaks to the formula can actually improve the performance or make a scent more pleasant and wearable for contemporary tastes, okay? Uh, I do think, though, that this is probably going to happen more on a niche uh, level rather than the designer level. Uh, but in general, I would say most of the time things get weaker as we progress, okay? At the end of the day, it's usually a delicate balance, in my opinion, between regulation, uh, cost, and consumer preferences that drive reformulations for better or for worse. And uh, I guess my advice, if you fall in love with a scent, maybe stock up on a backup bottle or two just in case, okay? And hey... If reformulation isn't vibing with you, don't be afraid to explore some indie and niche brands that tend to be more consistent in their ingredients and quality. So I guess that's that for, for this. Let me know in the comments below what you think, okay? Um, this is basically the lowdown and dirty on why uh, fragrances keep getting reformulated from my perspective, having been in that industry. But let me know yourself have you been personally victimized by a favorite scent getting watered down which one is it let us know in the comments below and we'll have a conversation about it okay and uh yeah that's it i'll see you in the next one bye bye oh and um youtube thinks that you like this video the most uh because they have this fancy algorithm so they basically just tell you click on this one and you will be satisfied okay so why don't you go ahead and try it See ya.